Have you ever wondered how the rules of the game called democracy were decided? Well, it's a fascinating tale that takes us back to ancient Greece. The term democracy is a combination of two Greek words, demos, which means people, and kratos, which translates to power. In essence, it signifies power to the people, a concept that was quite revolutionary when it was first conceived around the 5th century BCE in Athens. Before the advent of democracy, most societies were governed by monarchs or small groups of influential people, like oligarchies. These were like games where only a select few decided the rules and the majority had to play along. But then the Athenians decided to change the game and democracy was born. This new system of government was groundbreaking. It shifted the power from the hands of a few to the collective will of the people. Instead of a single king or a small group of elites deciding the fate of the nation, every citizen had a say. It was like moving from a game where only the strongest player called the shots to one where everyone had an equal say in determining the rules. This transition wasn't smooth or immediate. It took centuries of evolution, debates, revolts and reforms to shape the democratic systems we are familiar with today. But the fundamental premise remained the same. Power should rest with the people. Democracy at its core is like a game where everyone gets to participate in deciding the rules. The players, in this case the citizens, have the power to elect their leaders, voice their opinions and influence the policies that govern their lives. So, in essence, democracy is a system that emerged with the intent to give power to the people. It's a game where everyone has a voice and the majority's will guides the way forward. But like any game, it has its challenges and complexities which we'll explore in the next scenes. And what are the key principles that uphold a democratic system? This question takes us to the heart of democracy. It's five fundamental pillars. Voting, equality, freedom of speech, freedom of the press and the rule of law. Let's begin with voting. Imagine democracy as a colossal game where every player has the power to shape the rules. Voting is the tool we use to express our preferences, to choose leaders who will make decisions on our behalf. Just as you would elect a class representative, citizens vote to select their government. But remember, voting isn't merely a right, it's also a responsibility, our primary means of influencing the game's direction. Next, we have equality. In this game of democracy, everyone plays by the same rules, regardless of their status or wealth. The law does not discriminate between the rich and the poor, the young and the old. It's a level playing field where every player is equal. Freedom of speech is our third pillar. It's the freedom to voice your opinions, to critique the game's rules or propose new ones without fear. It's the cornerstone of a vibrant, evolving democracy, one that values the wisdom and perspective of its people. The fourth pillar is the freedom of the press. Think of the press as the referee in our game, one who ensures fair play and holds players accountable. They report on the game's progress, call out unfair moves and keep everyone honest, all without fear of retribution. Finally, we have the rule of law. It's the idea that everyone, including those who run the game, must adhere to its rules. No player, no matter how powerful, is above the game's laws. These principles, voting, equality, freedom of speech, freedom of the press and the rule of law are the pillars that uphold a democratic system. They ensure that the game of democracy is fair, open and responsive to its players. These principles form the backbone of a democratic society, ensuring that everyone gets a fair say. Did you know that not all democracies function in the same way? Indeed, there are two main types of democracy, direct and representative. Direct democracy is like a classroom where every student votes directly on every decision. It's the most unfiltered form of democracy where citizens participate directly in making laws and policies. The ancient city-state of Athens was an example of this. However, direct democracy can be challenging in large societies with millions of people as it requires high levels of citizen participation and understanding of the issues at hand. On the other hand, we have representative democracy. It's like choosing a few students to make decisions for the class. 
people vote for representatives who then make decisions on their behalf. This is how most modern democracies like the United States operate. It's more practical in large societies where direct participation of all citizens is not feasible. The choice between direct and representative democracy often depends on the size and complexity of a society. Democracy, like any system, has its own set of challenges. Let's unpack this and delve into the major challenges that democracies across the globe grapple with. Firstly, we have the issue of majority rule versus minority rights. Democracies operate on the principle that the majority's decision prevails. But what happens when the majority's decision infringes on the rights of the minority? This delicate balance between majority rule and preserving minority rights is a perennial challenge in democracies. It's like being in a team where everyone votes for the game to be played, but the chosen game is not suitable for a few team members. How do we ensure that their interests are also protected? Secondly, an informed citizenry is the lifeblood of any thriving democracy. However, staying informed and understanding the nuances of every issue can be a daunting task. Not everyone has the time, resources, or even access to reliable information. It's like trying to play a game without knowing all the rules, or worse, being misled about the rules. Thirdly, political polarization can pose a significant challenge. When citizens in a democracy become deeply divided over issues, it can be difficult to find a common ground. It's akin to a game where players are so divided over the rules that they can't agree on anything, making the game almost unplayable. Lastly, external influences such as misinformation, foreign interference and the influence of money can affect how people vote and how representatives act. Imagine playing a game where external factors like a biased referee or misleading information about the game's rules can affect the outcome. Not fair, right? These challenges are not insurmountable but addressing them requires constant vigilance, robust institutions, and an active, engaged citizenry. It's like being in a game where everyone is committed to playing fair, understanding the rules, and ensuring a level playing field. Addressing these challenges is crucial for the healthy functioning of a democracy. The game of democracy is nuanced and complex, but it is this very complexity that makes it so fascinating and worthwhile. Institutions play a pivotal role in maintaining the balance in a democratic system. Just like in a board game, each piece has its unique function, and the same applies to the institutions in a democracy. Each has its unique role, and they all work together to ensure that the game of democracy is played fairly. Let's first talk about the courts. The courts, like the king or queen in a game of chess, are there to ensure that justice is served. They interpret the law and make sure it's applied equally to everyone, no matter who they are. They're the guardians of justice, ensuring the rule of law is upheld. Next, we have the legislatures. They're like the players in the game, making the moves and setting the pace. Legislatures are responsible for creating laws that reflect the will of the people. They represent the voices of the citizens and make decisions that shape the course of the nation. Finally, we have the executive branch, often represented by a president or prime minister. They're like the game's referee, ensuring everyone is playing by the rules. The executive carries out the laws, making sure they are implemented properly. These institutions, with their unique roles and responsibilities, work together to ensure the democratic system functions properly. They maintain a balance of power, check each other, and ensure that the will of the people is upheld. Institutions are the guardians of democracy, ensuring that the game is played fairly. In a democracy, your voice matters. It's like being part of a team where every player's input is valuable. You're not just a spectator, you're an active participant. Your role? To vote, to stay informed, and to voice your opinions. Voting is the cornerstone of participation. It's like casting your move in a board game. You decide who represents you in making laws, shaping policies and guiding the nation's course. It's through this process that you exercise your democratic power and make your voice heard. Staying informed is equally important. In the game of democracy, understanding the rules, the players and the strategies is crucial. This means being aware of current events, understanding the issues at stake and knowing who your representatives are and what they stand for. And then there's voicing your opinions. 
In a democracy, you have the freedom to express your views, to question, to debate, and to seek accountability from your representatives. It's like discussing strategies in a game, aiming for the best outcome. But remember, with rights come responsibilities. Just like any team player, you have to play fair, respect others' rights, and abide by the rules. That's how we ensure the game of democracy is played well. Remember, in the game of democracy, every player has a significant role to play.